Hello, Science 10, and welcome to Lesson 9 on naming compounds. We are going to skip ahead in this lesson. And instead of starting with naming cations with stock system, I would like you to turn page 20 to the polyatomic ions. So today, what you're learning in this lesson is how to demonstrate how to use polyatomic ions when creating compounds, spe well, specifically ionic compounds, and you're going to demonstrate how to name polyatomic ions in a compound. Now, polyatomic ions. You have learned molecular. You have learned ionic. Polyatomic ions are an extension of ionic compounds. So although, as you look at him, them here, you don't have to memorize these. These are on your periodic table. When you look at them, you'll notice CO3, for example. That's a molecular compound. We call it carbonate. Thing is, is all of these polyatomics create molecular compounds, but because their charge is negative overall, once they combine into their two uh, molecular states, they're attracted to positive ions. So they end up attracting a metal. So it becomes a metal and a non-metal, making an ionic compound. We just call it polyatomic because there's lots of different atoms, poly meaning many, atomic meaning atoms. And they're all ions because they have a charge. So let's start with what are polyatomics. So polyatomic ions, like I said, are made up of more than one element that are bonded covalently, meaning they're bonded like molecular compounds. These elements end up having an overall charge that is negative, so they're attracted to the opposite charged ions. Now, when I say all of them, it's not true. I believe there is one we will work with. Yes, right here, ammonium, which is positive, okay? We will see it sometimes in certain things, but essentially it'll be attracted to a negative ion then. But for all, most of them, it is per negative charges. So they're charged to, attracted to the opposite charge, and then they end up forming an ionic compound. So for example, if you look up there in this box, you have hydrogen and then you have oxygen. Now we know oxygen and hydrogen like to bond together because hydrogen has one electron, it wants two, and oxygen likes to bind more because it likes to be in a full octet. Now, in this case, what we see is this molecule has a charge of negative one because there are nine protons, but 10 electrons because you have all of the electrons from the two together, so it becomes a negative ion. You don't need to understand the math behind it, but you will learn that this commonly formed OH compound is known as hydroxide. So this hydroxide ion is usually attracted to positive ions, the cations, and they will make an create a crystal lattice, which we see in ionic compounds. So this is, for example, an NaOH would be sodium hydroxide. You wouldn't name it sodium oxygen hydride. It would just be sodium hydroxide. Again, you have a periodic table, and at the very top of your periodic table, there is a chart that has all the polyatomics that we are going to be working with. So you don't have to memorize them, they're there. And we're gonna practice lots with them. Today, it's just about getting the form notes into our, into our stuff here. So if you have an ionic formula and you need more than one polyatomic ion to balance the charge, you must write the polyatomic ion in brackets in the chemical formula. Now, this isn't going to make sense yet until we do lots of practice. So what I'm trying to say here, guys, is like ionic compounds, which you've learned to name and balance charges, you balance charges on both the positive and negative until they equal out a net charge of zero because you want your entire molecule to be a net charge of zero. Polyatomics aren't any different, except the problem is, is if you look at most polyatomics, then go back here. If you look at most polyatomics, they already have subscript numbers attached to them at the end. They're all right there. So what this is saying is, let's say you had to take, for example, um, chlorate right here and had to balance it with a charge that was the opposite charge was three plus, let's say, okay? You're not going to just leave this three and write another three beside it because then that would mean there's 33 oxygens, which is bad. We don't want 33 oxygens. So instead, what we do is we use brackets. So this is an example of calcium nitrate. Calcium being a two plus charge 
and nitrates being a one negative charge. So in order to balance these two out, I needed to have two whole molecules of NaO3 or NaO3, oh my goodness, NO3 or nitrate to balance out calcium's charge. So I put brackets around these, making sure that all of this stays together because this is one compound. And then letting you know that there's two of them in this chemical formula. Hopefully that makes sense so far. Okay. So let's look at what is the chemical formula for ammonium phosphate. So what you would do is you would go to your polyatomic, you would go to your polyatomic chart and you would notice that it is N H four. And this has a charge of a plus. And this is P O three. Oh, and I'm forgetting the charge. So let's just jump back really quick and look at the charge on phosphate. So I found ammonium right here. And phosphate is right here. Perfect. Negative three. Let's just go back to our example. So this is negative three. So much like our original plan, we need to balance these out. A positive one charge does not balance with negative threes. There's more negative than there is positive. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to make sure that this also becomes three positive to balance out this negative. So when I write this, ammonium goes first, because that's what it said in the name. So NH4, that's the ammonium ion. I'm keeping it together. But I just told you that in order to balance out my charge, I need three of them. So now I have three ammonium ammoniums, which makes it positive three for my whole thing. And then I have phosphate, which is PO3. Now I didn't need to add brackets and I don't need to add any sort of extra subscript because this was already three negative and I balanced it out right here. I'm gonna make this solid. This is an ionic compound. So there is my ammonium phosphate. Brackets around the ammonium because I needed three of them to balance out the charge of phosphate. Just to show you that quickly, there is positive one, positive two, and positive three. So overall, oops, I have three ammonium uh, molecules together. So NH4 brackets, three of them, and I have three negatives, so I just write that there, all right? So that's how you would actually use the brackets and that's how you would name them, making sure again, you're using your ionic rules and balancing them out. So let's look here. We have to do it the other way too. This is ammonium phosphate. I also have to be able to look at the chemical compound and then write it out. So it's pretty simple. All you need to do is look for your first element, aluminum. And this one isn't in your notes, so you might want to add it. So there's aluminum, all right, Al. This doesn't matter, nor do these, nor does this, because that's just showing that it's balanced out. I just want to name it. And you just name it like you would any ionic compound. First element first, second element. But this time, rather than adding an IDE ending, we just call it what it is because it's a polyatomic. So this is sulfate. And that's how you would name it. So we're going to do lots of practice. Don't you worry. We're going to do practice, practice, practice. So make sure you have these in your notes. And if you have any questions, please.